Hello, my name is Roy Johnson from Acoustic RGJ. Today's video has come about as a result of somebody that once asked me about which chords they should use when writing songs. Um, and also somebody else asked me about chords and how they, where do they come from basically. So today's video is an attempt to answer those questions. We'll be covering a number of things in today's lesson. Um, we'll be looking at keys and sharps and key signatures and how keys become, if you like. Uh, we'll be talking about tones and semitones. Uh, and in passing, we'll have a look at chromatic scale, so we'll get an understanding of what the pool of notes is that we use to make up chords. And we'll also have a look at intervals, because intervals themselves are very much directly related to how a chord sounds. So the starting point, really, is to understand the concept of tones and semitones. Now, of course, each tone has a name. So they go obviously from A up through to G, but between some of them there are sharps. So for example, between A and B you have A sharp. So to help us understand what the note names are, we're going to have a look at the chromatic scale. As you will be aware, the guitar neck is divided up by frets. Frets are these metal pieces that are attached to the fingerboard. And between the nut and between the body, where it joins the body there, there are 12 frets. Now each fret represents a semitone. So between here and here is a semitone. Similarly between here and here is a semitone. So basically we have a series of semitones all the way up the neck. Now a tone is basically two frets. So between here and here is a tone, or between here and here is a tone, or if we take the open string, between there and the second fret is a tone. So basically a semitone is just a one fret interval and a tone is a two fret interval. Okay, so we've had a look at the chromatic scale and what it looks like on the guitar. Now we're going to have a look at the chromatic scale and see what it looks like when it's written out in music form. Now, the first line of music shows us the chromatic scale. You can see that it starts on the C and it finishes on the C. And between those two C's there are a series of semitones. So we go C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Uh, and take note that between E and F there's no E sharp, and between B and C there's no B sharp. Now on lines two and three I've written out a major scale. I just wanted to show you this briefly so you're aware that scales aren't just made up of semitones. So the first two notes are a C and a D, but you'll see that between the C and the D there's a letter T. And that T stands for tone. So in other words, that's two fret intervals. It's not a semitone. So between C and D is a tone, between D and E is a tone, and then between E and F we have a semitone. So I won't go through the whole scale now because we'll look at that in a bit more detail later on. But just be aware that, uh, as I said, scales are made up of a mixture of tones and semitones, not just semitones as per a chromatic scale. Now the reason there's no B sharp or E sharp in a chromatic scale is all down to harmonics and the theory of harmonics. So harmonic is, is when you play an, an octave and uh, you subdivide that into a third and you get another octave and then you take that and you subdivide that and you end up with 12 notes and really it's quite arbitrary how those notes were named but because there were only 12 notes um, for reasons that were decided in ancient times uh, it ended up with there just being A to G subdivided and there wasn't any room for a B sharp or an E sharp. Earlier on I mentioned that we'd be looking at intervals. Now an interval is just really the gap between one or more notes. So for example, if I count up from A to B, then A to B would be a second interval. And if I wanted to work out what the interval was from A to C, then I'd go A, B, C, which is one, two, three, or an interval of a third, and so on. So if you could go all the way up to the seventh note, so you could go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that would be an interval of a seventh. So let's see what the intervals look like on the guitar itself. So an interval is the gap between two different notes. So if I play a C to a D, 
that is known as an interval of a second. We start counting on the first note, one, and we finish counting on the second note, two, so C to D. So if I went from a C here to an E here, we would have C, D, E, and that would be an interval of a third. And we can do this through all the note names. So we could go from C to F, and that would be an interval of a fourth, or C to G, and that would be an interval of a fifth, or we could go from C to A, which would be an interval of a sixth, or we could go from an interval of a C to a B, which would be our seventh, and then once we get from C up to C, that then is our octave. One particular interval that we're interested in is the interval of the third. The third is a very significant interval because it determines whether a chord is major or minor. And in fact, when you play a major or a minor chord, what you're effectively doing is you're altering the third interval. So you can have a major third or a minor third. So a major interval is made up of five semitones. So if we count up from A, for example, we could go A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp. So A to C sharp is a major third. And we'll have a look in this and how this relates to chords in, in a moment. If we count up four semitones, say from A, so we go from A, A sharp, B, C, those four semitones result in a minor third. The other reason that thirds are important is because, for example, when you play a sus chord or, or a, what they call a suspended chord, um, what, this, what the suspended element means is that you're actually taking away the third. Now, if you think about it, if, if, now if you think about it a third can either be major or minor, and that gives you the flavour of the chord. So if you take that away, a suspended chord could arguably be defined as being neither major nor minor. And in fact, you can use suspended chords in major and minor contexts without having to change that particular suspended chord at all. The third is also taken away from what are known as power chords. So a power chord, you just have the, the first and the fifth of the scale. So let's just see how these third intervals work with a chord. Let's start with an A major chord. Okay, so I'm gonna work out what the third note is of an A major chord. So I'm gonna start on an A. Then I'm gonna count up A, a sharp B, so that'd be my second, and then C, C sharp will be my third. Now the third in this case is a C sharp because in the key of A major we have a sharpened C. Now if I play that note here, you can see that that forms part of my A major chord. Okay. So from A to C sharp is our major third. Now if I take the major third and I flatten that major third, one semitone, that interval now, A to C natural, is a minor third. So let's see how that manifests itself with a chord. So if I play an A major chord, we can hear we've got the major third in the A major chord. Now if I flatten that C sharp to a C natural, I form an A minor chord. So we have A major with a major third, and we have A minor with a minor third. And let's do the same thing again with an E major chord. So this time we're gonna find my third by starting on an E. F sharp will be my second and G sharp would be my third. So if I play an E major chord, you can hear that that G sharp under my first finger sends that G sharp there. So that E to G sharp is my major third. And again, if I take that major third and flatten the major third by one semitone from a G sharp to a G, I get a minor third, and you can see how if I play my E major chord with a G sharp in it, if I take that away, so effectively I flatten it, I then end up with an E minor chord. 
the minor chord has the flattened third. Okay, so just to sum up where we've got to so far. We've come across the concept of semitone, so a semitone is the interval of one fret on a guitar. And we've also come across the interval of a tone, and a tone is two frets on a guitar. An interval is the gap between two notes. So for example, if we're counting from A up to D, A, B, C, D, that would be the interval of a fourth. So when you're working out the interval, you would start by counting the first note and by counting the final note. It's not really the gap between them, so just be careful there. We also talked about the concept of a third, which can be either a major third or a minor third, and that's really important because it defines whether a chord is major or minor. Okay, so we want to get to the point where we can start talking about chords. Now chords and keys and scales are closely related. The key that you're in determines what notes are available to you to use as a, as a composer, for example, or a musician. Um, and then those notes effectively determine which chords uh, can be used in that key. Now, for this exercise, when we talk about chords, we're going to be actually talking about triads. Now, the definition of a chord is it's three different notes played at the same time. Now, you will be aware that when you play chords on the guitar, if you're strumming chords, they don't just have three notes. You might strum a six string chord or a five string chord. But basically when you play, for example, a six string chord, all you're doing is doubling up certain notes. If you take a G major chord, for example, you'll have three different Gs, one on the sixth string, one on the third string, and one on the first string. All you're doing is you're doubling up or trebling up the notes, albeit they're being in a, in a different octave. But the basic chord only has three different notes. In this case, it'd be a a G, a B, and a D. So we're going to start thinking about chords. So chords are made from notes that come from scales. So the first thing we need to do is think about what a scale is. To start with, we are going to have a look at major scales and see what kind of formulas are used to build a major scale. Now bear in mind, there are different types of scales. Apart from major scales, there are three different minor scales, and there are pentatonic scales, etc. And what makes those scales different is the relationship of all the tones and semitones that occur in those scales. But all major scales will have the same sequence, it's like a formula. So let's have a look at the C major scale and see if we can understand what that formula is and how that then helps us to determine which sharps appear in which keys. So the C major scale, the first thing to note is that we've got no sharps or flats in the key signature. And we can see that the scale starts on a C and it rises up to a C. And if we look at the intervals between the notes, we can see that between C and D is a tone, between D and E is a tone, E and F a semitone, F and G a tone, G and A a tone, A and B a tone, and B and C a semitone. Now that formula of tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, applies to all major scales and it's that interval that gives the C major scale the sound that it has. The G major scale as you can see is a little bit different to the C major scale apart from the fact that it starts on a G and finishes on a G you can see that in the key signature there's a, a sharp sign it happens to be an F sharp so let's have a think about where that F sharp comes from. So following our formula that we learned from C major G to A is a tone a to B is a tone, B to C is a semitone, C to D is a tone, D to E is a tone, but then we go from E to F. Now we know that that interval wants to be a tone, so what we'd have to do, instead of going from E to F, which would be a semitone, is we're going to sharpen the F to make an F sharp, and then E to F sharp becomes a tone. That then helps us with the next interval, which is a semitone, which takes us from F sharp to G. We could repeat this exercise all the way up to the point when we have five sharps. In fact, there might be something you want to have a, a try out with a, a pencil and paper. But we'll look at just one more for today and that'll be D major. The D major scale has two sharps. So let's think about where they come from. We know the first interval, D to E, is a tone. And we also know that the next interval needs to be a tone. But if we go from E to F, E to F is a semitone, so in order to make that interval a tone, what we will do is we will put a sharp against the F, so you go from E to F sharp, and that creates a tone interval. 
Now the next interval fortunately wants to be a semitone and by having raised the F sharp, the interval now from F sharp to G is a semitone. We're then okay with the, with the tone from G to A and the tone from A to B. But when we get to B and C, again that interval wants to be a tone, but B to C is actually a semitone. So what we need to do, we need to sharpen the C sharp. So we have B to C sharp. And that fortunately, because we've raised the C sharp, C sharp to D is a semitone as per our formula. I would just like to talk about a chord in terms of its technical definition. A major or a minor chord is technically made up of three different notes, hence the word triad. There are different chords, obviously, that are what are called extended chords. So for example, you could have an A7 chord. So an A7 chord is basically an A chord, but with another note added. So it's a four note chord. But to start with, we're just going to be looking at major and minor chords, or in other words, major or minor triads. And don't get confused by the fact that when you strum a chord, you may be playing a six string chord or a five string chord. If you play a six string chord, for example, if you're playing a, a G major chord, a G major chord or G major triad is basically made up of three notes, G, B and D. But when you play it as a chord on the guitar, what you do is you effectively double up some of those notes. So for example, the G note occurs on the sixth string, the third string and the first string. It's not that you're adding different note names. It's just you're, you're doubling up or trebling up on some of the notes and putting them into different octaves. So now, thank goodness, comes a time when we can actually look at the chords or the triads themselves um, in conjunction with scales and start determining how the chords are put together. So let's have a think about the chords that we can build on a C major scale. If we take the first note, C, what we can do is we can stack additional notes on top of that C. So on top of the C, I can put an E. So C to D to E, C to E, is the interval of a third. And then I can put another third on top of that from the E, so E, F, G. So we end up with a triad of C, E and G. And that is our C major chord triad. Basically it's just two thirds stacked on top of each other. If we move on to the next chord, which is built on a D note, we now again have two thirds stacked on top of each other. This time we go from D to F, that's D, E, F, then from F to A, F, G, A, two thirds, which gives us a chord of D minor. We can then go on to E minor, which again is two stacked thirds, which gives us a chord with the notes E, G and B. Then moving on to the next chord, which is a chord of F major, with the notes F, A and C. And then we get on to a chord of G, G, B and D. Now this is written as a major chord, Although normally when you're playing that particular chord, you'd play it as a seventh chord because it's what's known as the dominant chord and it kind of creates a, a link from, your, from the G chord back to the root chord, which is a C chord. The next chord is a minor chord, A minor, A, C, E. Then we have B diminished and we have our root chord C again. So these chord shapes may not be familiar to you, but I've written them out this way just so you get a sense of the chord rising in, in pitch. The other thing you'll notice is that there aren't any sharps or flats in this key signature. Let's just hear what a C harmonised scale sounds like. We'll have a look at the G major harmonised scale now. It's important to remember that the same rules apply to harmonising the G major scale as the rules apply to the C major scale earlier on. So in other words, all the triad chords will be built up by stacking thirds. Let's have a look and see. The G major harmonised scale starts obviously on a G. You can see the first triad is a G major triad with the notes G, B and D. Each of those notes being a third interval apart and we've got two intervals stacked on top of each other. So we've got G, A, B, and then B, C, D. They are our two thirds. Moving up the scale from G to A, we still have an A minor chord. Of course, in this case, we have a minor third, but it's still two thirds stuck on top of each other. So we have A, B, C, and then C, D, and E. So A to C is a third, and C to E is a third. Now a third chord, is a B minor chord, 
Just be careful with this one because you can see that we have an F sharp in the key signature and that's represented in the triad that we play for B minor. Jumping ahead a little bit, when we get to the fifth chord, which is known as our dominant chord, the triad is written as a D major chord. In, in a lot of practical situations, you'd actually play the D major chord as a D7 chord, because that's the chord that resolves to the key chord, in this case a G major. It forms what's known as a perfect cadence. And again, jumping forward, the seventh chord, which is F sharp diminished. That has an F sharp, an A and a C. F sharp diminished is a chord that you won't often see in contemporary music. However, it is a good chord to substitute for the fifth chord. So in other words, rather than playing a D7 before the G, when you're coming to the end of a piece, for example, try using an F sharp diminished chord instead of the D7, because an F sharp diminished chord will resolve really nicely to a G major chord. And let's have a listen and see what a G harmonized scale sounds like. do this exercise all the way up to five sharps which would put us in the key of B major however I'll spare you all that because it's quite a long long thing to go through but what we'll do to finish off is have a look at the D major scale so now we found ourselves in the key of D major and we're building triads on that scale so this time we've got to keep a note on the fact that we've got an F sharp in the key signature and a C sharp in the key signature so the first chord starts in a D and we have the notes D F sharp and A, and as in all the other cases, two stacked thirds. We then go on to our E minor chord, which is E, G and B. And then we have our next chord, which is F sharp minor. It's called F sharp minor rather than just F minor because we have an F sharp in the key signature. You notice there's also a C sharp in this chord. And again, it's sharpened because we have a C sharp in the key signature. We then go on to our G chord, G, B, D, which is a major chord. Now our fifth chord is written as an A major chord, but again, when you play this in a practical way, you'd probably find that that A would become an A7, and the A7 will resolve very nicely to the D major chord, certainly at the end of the song. We then go on to a B minor chord, our C sharp diminished chord, and our D major chord. And let's hear what a D major harmonised scale sounds like. Well that's about it, we've been through quite a lot today, but I'll just quickly summarise the things we've been through. So we started off by looking at semitones and tones and how they relate to the frets on the fingerboard. We then built a chromatic scale made up of all the semitones from an E to an E and from a B to a B. That's our, effectively our 12 notes chromatic scale. And we then looked at intervals, i.e. how you count from one note up to another. And how the third interval is an important interval because it comes as a major third or a minor third and that helps us to build major chords and minor chords. We then had a look at building major scales and the formula that's used to build a scale and how as a result of that formula some notes become sharpened and those sharps are then reflected in the key signature which determines what key we're playing in. And from the scale we then built triads on each of the notes of that scale and each of those triads effectively forms a chord so we end up with a harmonised scale and that harmonised scale represents the majority of the chords that are used in songwriting when we're writing songs in specific keys. So I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you want to ask any questions then put them in the comments below the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon and then I can let you know when I've released other videos um, which will hopefully be of interest to you. Okay, thanks for listening and bye for now.